In example 3, we are told that the figure 8.19 shows a snapshot of a waveform in a string. The numbers in the diagram show the scale in centimeters. And we are told that the speed of the wave is 10 meters per second. So this is the snapshot of the waveform in the string. Now we are told that with reference to this wave motion, determine the wavelength, amplitude, frequency, and period of the oscillation. Now how would we determine these physical quantities? Let's start with the first one, wavelength. Now what is wavelength? Now how do we determine wavelength? We have to recall two things. First of all, wavelength can be given by speed over frequency. So although we are provided with the speed, we do not know the frequency of the wave. In fact, frequency is one of the physical quantities which is asked for later on. So this method will not be a suitable one for determining wavelength. We consider now the snapshot which is given here. We have to remember that wavelength is the distance covered by a wave when that wave makes one oscillation. And then when we look at this diagram, we, send, we find that it is displacement versus distance. So we can easily get the wavelength if we can be able to determine a complete oscillation here. Now a complete oscillation could be from one trough to the next trough. For example, from this trough here all the way to the trough which is adjacent to it. From this point to this point. And we find that that gives us 40 centimeters. You can see from this point to this point is 40 centimeters. This would be equal to the wavelength. Or we can consider the distance from one crest. This is a crest and this is the next crest. Now this crest is at the 60 centimeter mark while this one is at the 20 centimeter mark. Now this means that from this distance to this distance is 60 while from this distance to this distance is 20. That again shows us we can easily get the wavelength by doing 60 minus 20. Again, we find that it is 40 centimeters. Another way of determining wavelength is by considering this point here, this point here, and this other point here. Again, it is from 10 to 50. Again, we find that the wavelength is 40 centimeters. So while this is not the correct method, we can easily determine the wavelength as 40 centimeters or 0 0.4 meters. Now let's go to the next part. In this part, we are asked to determine the amplitude of the wave. The amplitude of the wave. Remember the amplitude of the wave is the maximum displacement of the particle from equilibrium position. This is the equilibrium position and we can see the maximum displacement of that particle in the positive direction is 5 centimeters and also the maximum displacement from equilibrium position in the negative direction is also 5 centimeters. So the amplitude is 5 centimeters. 5 centimeters. This one can be written as 0 0.05 meters. And this one is just as simple as that. Let's look at part C. In part C, we are asked to determine the frequency of the wave. Now remember we determined the wavelength as 0 0.40 meters. We have just seen that the amplitude of the wave is 0 0.05 meters. Now we have to determine the frequency. In our previous two examples, we determined frequency differently. In the first example, we determined frequency by considering the number of oscillations per unit time or the number of wavelengths per unit time. In this question, we are not provided with the number of oscillations in a certain given time interval, but we are provided with the speed. We have just calculated the wavelength. 
we ask ourselves how can we combine the physical quantities that we have already calculated with the ones which are provided in the question to get what we need? And the answer is straightforward. We remember that frequency is equal to speed divided by the wavelength. We've just been told that the speed is 10 meters per second, while the wavelength is 0 0.40 meters. And this will give us, of course, these meters and these meters will will cancel out. This will give us 100 divided by 4 because we can easily multiply this one by 10 so as to convert it into a simple number such as 4 and we do the same with the numerator. If we multiply this, the numerator by 10, we get 100. 100 divided by 4 is just 25 per second. Or better still, 25 has. So remember, per second is the other unit for frequency because it is the number of oscillations per second or number of cycles per second, number of vibrations per second, and so forth. But the, the best unit to use here will be has. So the frequency is 25 has. Let's look at part D. In this part, we are asked to calculate the period of the oscillation, T. T is related to frequency by this relationship here, that T is equal to 1 over F. So we do 1 over, we've just calculated the frequency to be 25 per second, and this one will be equal to 0 point zero four seconds when per second becomes the numerator it it becomes seconds so the periodic time is zero point zero four seconds and this example is just as simple as that